Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us this week in America, coast to coast, website thisweekinamerica.us. Jenna Gregory encapsulates the resplendent diversity of human experience in a collection of writings, too. Using his distinctive literary voice, he guides readers on a journey into the heart of the human condition. His various reflections on people, places, and events hold both personal and universal value. Honest, compelling, emotionally accessible, accessible. The book tells not only the author's story, but our story as well. John was born and raised in Chicago. He worked his way through Barat College. That's a small liberal arts college in Lake Forest, Illinois, as a cook. A particular passion, by the way, delectable decadent desserts. After graduation, he worked his way up in the elevator industry from tech support to mechanic, doing both the field installations and maintenance. His inspiration for his poetry comes from life around him. A word heard is enough to get him started. The book we're talking about is a collection of writings, too. His website is a collection of writings.com. Of course, you can link on directly on our website this week in America. John Gregory with us on the program. Hi, John. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. Good afternoon. It is great to have you with us on the program. And this book is, is fascinating. I'll talk about your style in a second. But first of all, it's a collection of your thoughts. And some of these are actual what experiences you had and others are just thoughts as you're driving around and contemplating what's going on around you. Talk about that process when you decided, you know, I think there's something here. I'm going to start writing this down and maybe even publish a book. Well, okay. Actually, way back in... Uh probably 88, 87, I was going to Rockford College and I took a poetry class. And as the semester was going on, I was realizing that sometimes the instructor or somebody would say something that would just kind of like write itself in my mind. So I was like, okay, you know, if, if this stuff has happened, maybe I should start writing it down. So I did one and then I continued writing and did the second one. And they're so fascinating. And again, these are experiences, thoughts that you had, but they're thoughts that all of us have and topics that all of us deal with on a daily basis. I mentioned your writing style and you took the poetry course. Talk about how you would describe your style and the challenge of doing this with in poetry form. Hmm. Although it sounds like it came fairly natural to you. You're taking the poetry course and you're thinking these thoughts basically in poetry form. Yeah, there was one time the teacher said, we have now come to the end of the hour and it's not in the, it's in the first book. And I'm right, walking to my next class and I go to the end of the hour, the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the year, uh, summer and winter, winter and fall. And it's like, boom, you know, 20 seconds is written in my mind. Of course, then I got to go and write it down so I don't forget it. Yeah, and then um, compiled enough that you've got a book, and you do. It's a collection of writings, too. The website for John Gregory is a collection of writings.com. Information there on the book. The book, of course, available at Amazon, Barnes and Noble.com. And you can link on directly to John's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I mentioned emotionally accessible. I feel I know a lot about you just by reading the book, A Collection of Writings, too. Was that difficult to, to expose that part of you? Mm, not really, because it's just, I wrote what I thought or what I saw in others. Um, there's one uh, poem, The Dance, it was actually, I was at a nightclub and I was watching this one lady dance. And basically my thoughts, my poem was kind of how she kind of did the dance. She'd be afraid and the way people are watching me, I don't want to do this. And then as time went on, she realized they, Yes, forget it. I'll, <laughs> I'll just learn the dance and who cares? You know, and that's why the book is so relatable because those are thoughts that we've all had either ourselves as we're attempting to do the dance or whatever aspect of life or watching other people in situations like that. The book is called The Collection of Writings too. You start out talking about the journey towards sunset. I'm going to talk about some of the, the topics you discuss during because you, you, you really, it's a good cross-section of what lives are about. We, we feel happy. We feel pain. We feel apprehension. We feel stress and anxiety. Talk about writing about the, the journey through sunset. That's how, that's how the uh, collection of writings, too, begins. Talk about that. Journey through sunset. Yeah, that was that was the beginning, and you're talking basically uh, uh, about pain and, and the end and, and and getting through life, and and you talk a lot in the book about sunset and that uh, 
it, it, beginning. Is that how you look on each day? This is a new day. This is a new opportunity for me. Well, I look at it uh, every day is a new day, and every day you wake up should be joyous. I mean, I, I realized that, you know what, some people didn't wake up, and that's never happy. Um, some of the stuff, that, that one journey towards sunset sounds like it might have been in the first book, and that was written back in 88. I mean, that was when I was taking the poetry class, but I was also in my goth stage. So I was thinking, how could I write some of this stuff using poss possibility like sadness and maybe somewhat, you know, journey to sun westward that talks about death and whatnot. But also, you can read it where it's happy because it talks about... Some of them talk about nature. And, you know, everyone loves sitting and watching the sunrise and the sunset. It's pretty. That Yes. John Gregory, our guest on the program, his book is a collection of writings, too. The volume two is what we're talking about. Uh, information on both available, of course. And you can go to his website, a collection of writings.com. You talk about a true enemy is better than a false friend. I want to talk about some of these quotes that you you use on a, on a daily basis and you say that so eloquently, and and it's very simple. And you read that, and you're like, "Boy, that that makes a lot of sense." And sometimes we kid ourselves to think that's not the case. Was that something that that ended your life, or just watching another situation where you where you came up with that? I was watching somebody else, and I was realizing, you know, wait a second. You know, with a with a true enemy, you know where you stand. You know what they're going to do, how they're going to treat you. Uh, if you have somebody who acts like your friend but's not a friend, well, now you kind of like, wait a second. You start second guessing, are they doing this because of this or that? And I was watching somebody go through that. It's like, you know, that's, that would be a tough situation, I would think. Because to call somebody a friend and, like, not knowing. But that, yes. And it, again, a, a true enemy is better than a false friend, and sometimes we kid ourselves in thinking that that's not the case. A collection of thoughts in the book, A Collection of Writings, too. Our guest on the program is John R. Gregory. His website is at collectionofwritings.com. It seems like this process comes easily for you. Are you one of the—do you travel around with a, with a notebook so when you observe something, you're able to, to write it down, or you just remember it till you get back to the computer? No, actually, I write it on the notes on my iPhone. Ah, uh, see, that's that's modern. I would have a legal pad with me. You, you people that are more in the tech world, you can you can actually use your iPhone to keep track of all that. Well, my writing is kind of atrocious, so I sometimes have a hard time reading my own writing. <laughs> <laughs> when you published the, the the first book and then the, the second one, a collection of writings too, what kind of response did you get from from family and friends? Uh, family and friends liked it. Um, they thought it was interesting. And there's some of the friends that I know, I mean, when I would write something, I would actually so, show them, you know, right away. Sometimes they'd see it the first draft, seconds after I wrote it, and they'd either say, well, this looks good, or maybe you should think about this, change this word, something like that. And I would look, and if it fit right, then I would do that. Did anybody say, was that me you were writing about in that uh, in chapter 13? <laughs> Did you get any of that that people are like, yeah, nice job there, but was that me you were talking about? No, nobody has said that. The lawsuits haven't started, so you're okay. <laughs> John Gregory, our guest on the program, I'm talking about a book, A Collection of Writings too. It's really a, a fine meeting, purpose, hope, and a collection of, of writings, insights, thoughts, and, and feelings of, uh, of John R. Gregory. This interest in poetry, did that start as, as a child? Were you, you interested in that form? You took the class, so obviously it was something that, that interested you. Did that begin in childhood? Mm, no, not really. Uh, I mean, we're always, we're always reading. Um, our parents, uh, we, we always like to read books, mostly science fiction, actually. Um, no, I would say it wasn't until after the I took the poetry class because it was in the, it was something I basically had to do. It was an elective, and I realized that I liked it. I was I mean I was surprised, but say wow, this is really kind of interesting. So you went into that sort of like okay, I'm doing this because well I have to do this, and then you found out with an open mind, which you talk about in the book, a collection of writings too, and and take advantage of situations as they're presented. You actually found, I really like this, and I not only sort of like it, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. Yeah, it's like, wow, I sort of have a knack for it. 
What you developed your own voice. How long did it take before you felt comfortable? Like, okay, this this really gets the point across. It's succinct, and I think people could get something from this. Um, hmm, good question. Uh, I don't know. Probably. Uh, it took it took a while before I actually thought about publishing a book. Um, like I started writing in '88, and then really think about publishing until maybe like 2011 um so that's you know that's quite a number of years where i thought well wait a second you know people can uh, cause I've sh i showed some of my stuff to other people and they said well you know this is good stuff people can actually learn something from this yeah you know, i mentioned the quotes that you you try to live by john uh, our gregory our guest in the program his book is a collection of writings too uh, sharing his thoughts. Fascinating book, by the way. It's available all across the country and, of course, information at his website, a collection of writings.com. One is never fear your dreams. I don't want to talk about that because that's, that's something that, that, that obviously is important to you because you had this dream. You, you've gone to college. You've, you've built a very nice career going out on your own. And you've decided to, to write a book, publish a book. Uh, do people sometimes, dream and think but that's that's not reality that's in the dream world like i could never pull that off you obviously had some dreams and you were able to pull them off that's that yeah that's part of it but sometimes people think oh i can do I, oh i want to do this um oh, talk about the olympics since it's on because you might have like a run or a triathlon maybe as a kid they're into it and they say oh i want to be in the olympics and you might have somebody that well maybe you shouldn't do this or they're afraid that they're not good enough the other part of never fear your dreams is has to do with actual dreaming. See, I've never had a nightmare. I've never. I don't believe in nightmares. Dreaming is just. It's dreaming. It's just your mind having fun, playing around. How I look at it, and actually can give you a little um, momentum, some impetus to like follow those dreams because it is possible. One of the one of the the chapters in there that that you've written about is is life is full of wonders. All you need to do is see them. And there's so much meaning in what you're writing. Very few words, well-chosen words, and inspirational words. And I'm thinking, boy, that's really the case. Do you find sometimes do you see people, maybe even do it yourself, are going at, uh, at hyper speed through the day and really don't really take the time to stop and, and enjoy what's around them and take advantage of, of, of what the world is giving them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, quite a lot. Actually, you're you're working and there's a deadline. You have to get something done. Um, I'm putting in an elevator and I gotta get this get the door operator installed or wired, and I have a certain amount of time. And you're just work, 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 and just like all we do, it's almost like we're we're here on this earth to work, but we're not. We're here to obviously work because we need to make money, but also to to learn and to enjoy what I mean. There's a lot of wondrous things around and. Nature has done some amazing stuff, and we don't always see that. Yeah, and you talk about that, being out in the woods, and the wonders that you see there, the glory of that. Uh, one of the, the quotes you try to live by, stress is not bad if it consumes you. And I'm reading that, and I'm going, okay, that makes a lot of sense. There's stress in everything we do, basically. If we let it take over our lives, that's when we get into trouble. So that one sentence really can turn a life around for somebody if they read that and understand, wait a minute. When I let it take control, that's when when I've actually lost control of, of my life to something else. Right. I mean, in especially in society today, there's stress all around us. But stress helps you keep you, uh, you know, quick. It helps you think and makes you realize what's around you. It's when you allow it to consume you, allow it to control you. That's where you start having problems. Then you then what help you. Uh, think now it hinders you now you can't think you can't say you're doing a test and you're stressing out about it. oh my god I can't really question all of a sudden all the questions after that you can't think anymore because you get all the different chemicals in the body and the brain that are basically making it hard for the synapses to fire and memory to be recalled we're talking about the book, A Collection of Writings 2. The author is John R. Gregory, our guest on This Week in America. Information available at John's website, a collection of writings.com. 
Books available, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, information available at his website. You can link on directly to John's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. As I'm reading this, I'm getting, it, it all sort of hits you, the whole complexity of life and what a real wonder this is. Is that something you want people to take away from this, that, hey, there's happiness, there's sadness, this is life, and, and enjoy it, because it's a, it's a pretty miraculous experience that we've all been given. Yeah, pretty much. Just understand that it's we are alive, and there's a reason for it. Some people may not think so, but I mean, well, forget it. Even if there is no reason, you're still alive. There's still something. To yes. Learn. Um, one of the things that I've said is that every day we're taught a lesson, but sometimes the lesson we learned wasn't really the lesson that was taught. Interesting. See, you get thinking as you're reading a collection of writings to a couple of minutes left with, with John on the program. What has this meant for you, actually writing these, thinking them, them through? Has this been a life-changing experience for you as well? I mean, we're reading it, and I'm getting things out of it. I get the impression that as you're writing them, you're benefiting as well. Uh, some of them, yeah. Others, I just write. They pop into my head because I've seen something. It's like, wait, you know, I write it. It's like, well, somebody can learn from this. Um, some things like, um, which, oh, the 10 boxes of Christmas, that's, that's something that actually want to talk about dreams. It actually came to me in a dream. It was actually the fifth box. You know, this, it was like a, a snow covered uh, road and the guy's in a horse drawn carriage. He stops upon the side of the road. He sees a stranger with the box and the guy looks out of the, of the carriage and says, talks to the guy, what is this? The guy says, well, this is a box is a Christmas. This is the fifth box, the box of forgiveness. Then I wrote the other nine boxes from that when I woke up. All in the book, a collection, uh, a collection of writings to John Gregory. What are you working on now? Uh, I'm doing two things. I'm expanding the 10 boxes of Christmas because I think it's worthwhile. I'd like to actually try to figure out, I think it would make a good uh, like Christmas uh, TV show or cartoon or something. I'm thinking of that as, as you're mentioning that. And I'm trying to, so I'm expanding each one into different, they're all a little different. And then uh, I'm actually working on the third book a little bit. How long does it take you to, to feel like, okay, I've got enough here for a book. I've got some new thoughts here it's time now to, to publish this and to, and to let people enjoy these. Well, I seem to notice that I write in spurts. Sometimes I'll write like three or four poems in a, in a couple of weeks, and then a couple of weeks are passed and I'll write nothing. So it, it depends on uh, when I think I have, I, I load it, because after I write in my, uh, in my notes on my iPhone, then I got to transfer it all to Word. And then when it looks like I have enough pages, it's like, okay, I have around 65 or so pages or 60 pages. I think I have enough for a small little book. Well, the book is very easy to read. A collection of writings to the particular book we're talking about with the author John Gregory, the website at collectionofwritings.com. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can log on directly to, uh, to the website, get information on the book. It's one of those where you put it down, you pick it up. It's like you don't have to remember, okay, where was I? What was the plot going into this? It's there. There are thoughts. They are thoughts that will uh, inspire you, will motivate you, that will get you thinking. Very well written. John, it's been a pleasure to have you on the program. Best of luck with a collection of writings, too. We look forward to uh, uh, talking with you on a, a collection of writings, three. Well, thank you very much. This was a pleasure. I had a lot of fun today. Well, I did as well. John Gregory, our guest on the program. Once again, the book is A Collection of Writings 2. Information available at John's website, a collectionofwritings.com. And, of course, linking on at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back after these messages. Stay tuned.